recently I went viral. My fiance and I have gone through the devastation of things that most married couples cannot even make it through. I am not a marriage counselor, relationship counselor, nothing of that sort. I hold no licensure to anything that entails of the contents of this video. What is up YouTube? It's your Kaiser Rose and we are back with another mother freaking video. If you have not been to my channel before, welcome. If you have been to my channel before, welcome back. Recently, I went viral. I uploaded a TikTok that happened to make it from TikTok to Twitter to Instagram to Facebook, all of the above. And while I'm not going to feed into the controversy of what that video entailed, um, I would like to make a little bit of a switch. And since everyone seems to be so interested in what goes into relationships and so forth, you know, the internet is full of everyone's opinions and things of that such. <laughs> this video will be geared towards five things that have kept my relationship afloat. Now, before I get into these five things, I would like to go ahead and put out a disclaimer. I am not a marriage counselor, relationship counselor, nothing of that sort. I hold no licensure to anything that entails of the contents of this video. This video is just derived from my own personal relationship and what we have done to keep our relationship going thus far and that will carry into our marriage. So let's go ahead. The first thing, and I think that it's super, super important that we instilled in our relationship was being able to have open and hard conversations. And when I say hard conversations, I don't mean um, us talking about our body counts or past relationships or anything like that. We got down to the nitty gritty before we even became engaged. We talked about um, finances, we talked about debt, we talked about things that we want from each other in the household. We just laid everything out on the table and that's probably one of the biggest things that you can do to even find out if you're compatible with someone or if it's even going to be worth it to try to make things work with this person that you're trying to get into a relationship with. Before I was in this relationship and I was dating, um, it was very hard to decipher between people who were truly dating for marriage and people who were dating just for the fun of it. I've always been an individual that was dating for marriage, which really hurt me in most cases because while I was being serious, um, the other person was not. It all could have been avoided by just having one conversation about um, the expectations of the outcome of the relationship. We have hard conversations probably if not every day then we there's definitely a conversation that um we're having every week it was really hard for me actually before my relationship now to talk about things like money um i never even talked about money with anyone really that i had been with before and even in my relationship now it was something that was really hard for me to do because it was something that i did not know to do <laughs> I often found myself probably freezing up most of the time whenever money was brought up. However, um, I see now that it's something that was really necessary um, to do uh, when it comes to both current finances and also previous debt when you're 
combining your life with someone and these are all things that you're gonna have to discuss anyway so i just think now it's better to have it sooner rather than later number two which it was a big one for me but it wasn't really a big one for me was actually allowing him to guide me i don't say this in a way of me looking at him as a father figure i just you know my fiance is older than me so of course he has more knowledge than me sometimes i don't know things like you know we sat down and we looked at my car loan and he guided me to a place where you know we got down to nitty gritty of being able to refinance that you also have to look at the way that a person is guiding you because someone can guide you but if they don't have um the prior knowledge of what it is that they're guiding you in then that's kind of like the blind leading the blind. My fiance is very wise when it comes to a lot of things, so I can trust him to guide me. I can trust that he can tell me something and he's telling me what he's telling me in his best interest. And I think that this also ties into play with, you know, everyone wants to be independent figure and they want to have their own. They want to be self-made, but if you have someone who's there, who's knowledgeable and can move you along through the steps that it is to get you to where you need to be, why not work alongside that person and possibly have a bigger outcome, a better outcome of what it is that you're seeking? I think that a lot of that may tie into like pride of being, you know, self-made or um boss vibes or things like that i have no problem with saying that i allow my fiance to guide me to the point where many people would say that it's probably in a more submissive manner and that's okay too i'm okay with being submissive if it's for the benefit of my well-being all in all if i could not trust someone to guide me to a place that is going to put me in a better situation than the situation that I'm in right now. It would be really hard for me to um, keep a relationship going with that person. Number three would be making sacrifices, um, especially when it comes to you know marriage. Sacrifice is the number one thing that I believe is centered in marriage. Um, there are going to be days where you have things that you don't want to do or sometimes, you know, you're going to have to put in a little bit more work than the other person is. But that's just the sacrifices that you make to keep the relationship it is that you are trying to thrive in to grow. I think that it would be very hard to say. I think that we would not have made it this far had we not made sacrifices for each other there have been times where you know i was down to my last yet i gave because i would just want someone to do that for me and whether or not i knew that we were going to make it this far or we were not going to make it this far i still did it because i'm just a person that moves with intention and if i'm dating with the intention to marry, then of course I'm going to stay true to what it is that I want and I made that sacrifice and now here I am, I have someone who's willing to sacrifice their whole life for me. Number four would be going 100-100. My relationship, we go 100-100 in anything that it trickles down to you're not always gonna have great days you're not always going to have amazing days and what can make or break you is having that person behind you that is able to push you to where it is that you need to be for the both of you to succeed and i feel like that also very much ties into sacrifice you're not 
alone when you're in a relationship. At this point, you are creating a partnership with someone. This takes responsibility, it takes accountability, and it's not gonna work unless both people are putting their all into everything it is that you are setting forth in your relationship. I truly believe that if each person is not giving 100% in the relationship, that it's not going to work. If we are not both doing whatever it takes to keep this relationship afloat, then one person is going to experience burnout, which is going to lead to them holding resentment, which is going to lead to ultimately uh, them not even wanting to be in the relationship anymore. I 100% believe that 100-100 is the way to go when it comes to a relationship. And last but not least, I would say um, something that has kept my relationship afloat would be just providing support to one another. Like I said, every day is not going to be a good day. And quite frankly, my fiance and I have gone through the devastation of things that most married couples cannot even make it through and the only reason why we have been able to make it through what we have made it through without it causing any harm to the relationship that we're building is because we are there we have been there to support one another in each thing it is that we have gone through I probably would not have made it through half of the things that we had gone through had I not had someone in my corner who was literally there to pick me back up when there were things that I could not even do myself. You know, there are days when he's not feeling his best and even though he's a man and it may be harder for him to say that to me, it's knowing my partner and knowing the days where he may need to pick me up and I'm giving him that little extra reassurance, that little extra motivating factor, just sending him a quick little message and, you know, telling him how I feel about him or how much he means to me. Just the little things that can be the biggest support in someone's life and that can really make a difference in how they're navigating through their day, how they're navigating through their life how they're navigating in the relationship. So that's my last point in five things that have kept my relationship afloat. Like I said in the beginning, I am not a marriage counselor, obviously. I hold no specialization in couples therapy or anything like that. These are just things that have really helped me that have also made me grow as a person that have been factors that have been instilled in my relationship that keeps it strong and keeps it ultimately healthy we are in a very healthy relationship so i hope that maybe one of these points um helped you maybe you're looking to pursue a uh, stable relationship and don't know what it is to look for or you're looking for guidance on how to strengthen your relationship whatever the case may be um if one of these points you were able to take something away or you want more elaboration on it go ahead and leave a comment below remember to like and subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss any further video updates and that is all bye